What if your grandpa was built different? We start things off getting acquainted with Inuashiki. Okay, listen. Inuashiki. I tried. He and his rather uncaring family. They've just moved into a new place, which they are rather ungrateful for. As a modest man, Inuashiki cannot afford the finer things in life for his family. Nobody seems to like this guy. Not his family, and not his work. Though, one day he randomly finds a doge. Seems little Hanako was abandoned. Poor thing. Inuashiki is more than happy to care for the dog, but his wife is less than enthused. Much mean. Very sad. Sometime later, he's forced to bid the dog farewell. I'm so sorry, Hanako. If I don't let you go, she's gonna eat you. A disgraced Inuashiki runs off, but Hanako follows. The pair find themselves in a park before Hanako teleports behind him. Hi. The two embrace as extremely dramatic music plays in the background. <laughs> it's honestly ridiculous. Inuashiki notices another man in the park, and then suddenly, a blinding light fills the sky. The two men stand there as the light consumes them before... Whoa. Okay, I guess I'm okay. Inuashiki heads home, takes his daily family punishment, and sips on some miso soup, which he knows has no flavor. Everyone looks at him funny before he heads off to his room. He doesn't feel well. Though he at least has- wait, how did you get in here, Hanako? Let's rewind real quick. When he came home, he was scolded for still having the dog, so he left it outside. But now in the present, the dog's here. What's up with that? Back to the plot, Inuashiki begins to hotbox his room. Well, not actually, but man's is smoking like a chimney. He undresses himself to find the source of the flame, but there is none. He then inspects his hand and seems to press a button under his skin. Hold up. Is that a micro USB port? Is this a joke? Am I unpunked? Ashton Kutcher? I just got punked. Oh. Just moments later, Inuashiki's hand opens up and jettisons out the miso soup he had earlier. Then, he begins to really open up to Hanako. Before we know it, he achieves his final form. Holy shit, Grandpa is built different. I'm not gonna lie, it looks kinda cool, but also makes me wanna puke. Remember that other guy in the park? Yeah, his name's Hiro, and he's gone through a similar revelation. We cut to him showing his new powers to his friend Ando. He hacks some cars, commits about $300,000 in property damage, and replicates that one scene from Iron Man 1. Except, way more Japanese. Oh, and he's not very friendly to birds. <laughs> Sometime later, Inuashiki coincidentally runs into said bird and analyzes it. He encloses his palms around it and hacks into the bird's mainframe. After installing some antivirus and defragging his hard drive, the bird is miraculously revived. No, but seriously, how is this supposed to work? At first I thought it was like a defibrillator, but that's not at all what happened here. Then, he acquires super hearing, I guess. It doesn't really make sense, but suddenly he's able to hear people's calls for help. He answers one call by waltzing into a hospital and somehow sneaking into this kid's room. That could be a title. Old man sneaks into hospital to meet with children. He hits her with the Norton antivirus and just like that, cancer has been canceled. The mother and staff spot this strange man and security is called. Uh, just cured cancer, but all right, I'll go. Bye. We cut back to Hiro at school who spots his friend Ando getting bullied. He breaks things up with a precisely placed karate chop, then shows off his death grip. He's been practicing it a lot. As he squeezes away, the man's face fills with tears or sweat. I'm not quite sure, but he's soaking wet. Then, Hiro whips out some big guns. Well, actually, since guns aren't legal in Japan, we're just gonna have to do with this. Eventually, Ando stops Hiro before things go too far. Why would you defend someone like this, Ando? On his way out of class, Hiro runs into Shion, whose sole purpose in this movie is to be a simp, for no reason. I mean, I guess she was attracted to his display of dominance back there. He continues walking out, then hacks his own phone, which is a good reminder to trust no one, not even yourself. We see him on the phone with his mother when he's tasked with picking up child support from his well-off dad. Hiro mentions how his father sleeps around, but his mother defends him. Hiro arrives to his house, and his dad's pretty friendly. He hands Hiro the payment that invites him inside. We see that his father has his own, new family. While everyone is having a good time, Hiro points his finger gun at his dad. The kids notice, thinking it's a joke, and play along. Just as he's about to pull the trigger, he hesitates. Instead, he leaves and roams around the streets before finding a suitable substitute. He pulls up to these people's home and just stands there, ominously. The family can't help but be taken aback by his drip and calm, collected demeanor. This time, and without hesitation, Hiro does what the crappy writing demands him to do. <laughs> one by one, he ices everyone. Meanwhile, Inuashiki's spidey sense is tingling. He hears the nearby calls for help and runs over. But by the time he gets there, it's too late. However, he does find Hiro admiring his artwork. Inuashiki just stands there, in shock, before Hiro hits him with the <laughs> He collapses and lays motionless before the plot armor kicks in. He gets up and heads outside where he sees Hiro has taken flight. The next day, Hiro hacks his phone to have money and meets up with Ando. Here's a gift, buddy. This character makes no sense. Ando rejects the offer and questions him about the recent murders. Were you behind it? Come on, me? No. <laughs> 
Afterwards, Hiro meets with his mom who reveals she has cancer. He embraces her deeply while holding onto an expressionless stare. Meanwhile, Inuashiki is getting bullied by his family again. His jerk daughter Mari points out all his shortcomings. Your son is getting bullied, your wife is cheating on you, and I'm super obnoxious this entire movie. Inuashiki runs to his room and collapses in tears. He calls out for Hanako, stating that she's the only one on his side. Suddenly, he hears a man's prayers. My friend is killing people, he must be stopped. Inuashiki goes outside, picks up the doge, then prepares for liftoff. Very speed, much altitude. The pair end up at the park where the incident occurred. Oh look, it's Ando. They proceed to chat about the incident and Hiro's wrongdoings. They decide to train together, but it's a bit of a rough start to say the least. Back to Hiro. Him and his mother visit the doctor and it turns out her cancer is gone. As they walk out, Hiro proposes that they travel the world together. And he would have done it too, if it wasn't for those darn authorities. They corner Hiro, then a wild chase ensues. They surround and restrain him, but he easily tosses them away. Then, they exchange shots. First, the police have a go. Okay, ineffective. And then... <laughs> Hiro manages to escape, having taken the lives of several officers in the process. He later meets with Shion, and she takes him in. While in his new room, Hiro watches the news. His mother is on, surrounded by hounding reporters. How do you take responsibility for the lives your son has taken? All she can do in response is cry. Crying won't bring them back. Damn dude, chill. As he watches on, Hiro cries as well. Then, breaking news comes in. His mother took her own life. His expression fades from that of a crying beta to a stern sigma male. He notices on a forum he's reading that one man claims to have been the one to report his mother's location to the reporters. Hiro sends him a threatening message. Then, we cut to the man's household and learn that he's built like the average Redditor. Hiro hacks into his computer and the man is all laughs about it. It's all fun and games until... <laughs> Wait, are you kidding me? He can do this shit through the internet? The troll is left face down, ass up. Just the way I like it, as Hiro claims victory. Then, he proceeds to go on a mini rampage, taking care of everyone that made fun of him on the forums. After his spree, he exits his room and sulks a bit before Shion asks if the murders are true. He reveals to her that he isn't human, but she doesn't believe him. He whips out the alien drip, and she's shook. Then, they decide to go for a romantic fly over the city. Hiro is surprised that she's not scared of him, even though she's crying. I'm crying because those people had families and they're gone, but I still love you. What am I watching? Then, Hero's like, I will love you forever and never leave you. Okay, whatever, sure. <laughs> Moving on. They return home and shortly after, an entire battalion of officers pulls up. They open fire on Hero as he shields Sion. Who would win? A room full of soldiers or one bangy boy? <laughs> Unfortunately, Sion didn't make it. Meanwhile, Inuashiki's been training with Ando, and he's finally making progress. He takes a break to enjoy an energy drink and suddenly feels unwell. Then, he squirts all over Ando. Oh, this is what happened earlier with the miso soup. Ando theorizes that perhaps it's due to the salt. Okay, so his weakness is salt. We gotta keep this guy away from League of Legends. It's the guy! Anyway, for no reason at all, Hiro declares war on the entire nation of Japan. He hijacks all the phones, computers, and screens in the city, then does his best impression of Chief Keef. Oh, and he also hits him with a little... <laughs> this is, um, this is absurd. Not long after, Inuashiki catches wind of the mayhem with his super senses. Him and Ando counterhack the screens and broadcast their own message. Hey guys, this uh, super robot guy is killing everyone, so please turn off your screens. Hiro counters by launching missiles at buildings instead. Realizing he must act now, Inuashiki takes to the skies and meets with Hiro. He hits him with the bomb. Then, they both fly off in a high-speed chase. Using his magnetic feet, Hiro gains the upper hand before we end up basically back where we started, on a roof. Suddenly, the thirst hits, and Hiro enjoys a refreshing sip of water. <laughs> or not. No matter. I'll just drink your water, old man. Now that he's hydrated, moisturized, and living his best life, Hiro whips out the big guns and blasts away as Inuashiki flies up. They end up in space as Hiro prepares to administer the killing blow. However, <laughs> whoa, what a brilliant move. The water was actually salt water. Bravo. Before Inuashiki finishes him off, Hiro floats away and accepts his fate while remarking, I'm the villain, and you're the hero. Wow. And his name is Hiro, but he's the villain. That says a lot about society. After their battle, Inuashiki uses his spidey senses to find his daughter. She's hurt. No worries. I'll just reboot her hard drive real quick, and bam, alive she is. Suddenly, Hiro comes back, and he's totally fine, and also evil again. He beats the crap out of Inuashiki in a manner that can only be described as cartoonish. Well, I guess this is based on a Japanese cartoon after all. Then, Hiro picks up Mari and throws her off the building. This makes Inuashiki go sicko mode. 
With his new power level achieved, he charges forward, but so does Hiro. They collide in slow motion, and Hiro shatters as if he was made out of glass. Inuashiki rushes down and saves his daughter. She definitely wouldn't have survived this, but we'll let that slide. And just like that, the movie ends. Oh, and in the after credits, we see that Hiro is still alive. He visits Ando, and Ando's just like, Hey, despite everything, we're still friends. Let's play some video games. No joke. Ando looks back at Hiro, but he's already gone. You know, I'm sure the anime was good, and I'm sure the movie seems good in this format, but yo, this shit was bad.